legendary vehicles made famous by the battles of World War II, there are always some that come to mind. The Tiger, Sherman and T-34 are iconic enough that almost anyone can name them. However, one major power never captured the imagination in such a way, this being Britain. The deep-rooted conservatism which had permeated their army throughout previous decades resulted in British tank development during World War II being seen by many as substandard and even ineffectual on the whole. Post-World War I, there had been no real impetus to integrate tanks into the army. The strategy of home defence meant that the lion's share of the budget was being directed towards the Air Force and Navy. Britain's early war forays into tank design produced tanks such as the Matilda, Crusader and Valentine. All served the British Army fairly well, specifically in the North African campaign against weaker Italian opposition, but were never truly capable of handling the superior German armoured divisions. The British began the search for a tank truly capable to hold its ground against the Germans after the Battle of France, when the War Office issued a specification for a new, well-armoured tank, which could take the six-pounder gun. Initially, development delays in the Rolls-Royce engine being designed for the tank resulted in production going ahead on an earlier design named the A24 Cavalier, using an older, less powerful engine and many components from the increasingly obsolete Crusader. It was largely rushed out and was overall a disappointment due to its poor engine, combined with the increased armour and overall weight, leading to less than adequate mobility. The Centaur was another variant, essentially identical to the A27M Cromwell, but using an upgraded Liberty engine due to lack of the new Rolls-Royce variant. It was again rejected as a frontline tank due to reliability issues, but 1,821 were still built, serving to be a colossal waste of time for British manufacturing. The Cromwell, which eventually became the most numerous British tank of the late war, with 3,066 produced, was designated the A27M Cromwell. Characterised by its boxy silhouette and flat armour, it almost looks like what a child's sketch of a tank could be. Flat, straight lines everywhere. Despite this, it is arguably the most renowned and successful British tank of the war. What set the Cromwell apart from its failed or obsolete predecessors was primarily its engine. The Cromwell was powered by the Rolls-Royce Meteor engine, derived from the legendary Merlin which powered the Spitfire the emblematic and undoubtedly most famous British fighter of World War II, if not of all the nations involved. The Meteor was essentially a heavily adapted Merlin 3 engine and proved to be both reliable and extremely powerful in its use as the driving force behind the Cromwell. The Cromwell was armed initially with the modified 6-pounder, but from the Mark II onwards it used the ROQF 75mm gun, essentially a modification of the 6-pounder designed to fire US M3 75mm ammunition. Despite the benefits this gun brought in terms of ammunition availability and its ability to fire a useful HE round, it was never very effective against armour and left the Cromwell permanently undergunned when fighting its German contemporaries. It was never possible to fit it with the highly potent 17 pounder gun, an attempt of this was made in the Challenger, essentially a lightly armoured Cromwell with a larger turret. However, it proved largely impractical and unsuccessful. The Sherman Firefly was an example of a more successful attempt at mounting this gun in a combat effective tank, but that's a story for a whole other video in itself. The Cromwell was not renowned for its armour either. In fact, when a captain from the 55th saw its flat frontal armour for the first time, he reportedly stated that the designer should be hung for treason. With turret armour being a maximum of 76mm, it stood little chance against German weapons, with the renowned long 88mm punching through the flat metal with ease. However, this relatively light armour did help it in achieving its main advantage, speed. The Cromwell could easily reach 75 km an hour, however, it was proven that the suspension could not handle that level of speed. The initially 540 horsepower and later 600 horsepower engine was limited to powering the tank along at still an extremely high speed, 65 km on road and 40 km off it. It was still plagued by the characteristic slow reverse speed held by many other British tanks, however, with only one reverse gear. So, this left the British with a highly mobile tank with a decent, albeit certainly underpowered gun, and fairly average armour. The tank did not see action until after D-Day, as the British decided to continue training crews until then. The crews were sceptical though. Upon being briefed on their tanks and the obvious inadequacy compared to the German armoured divisions, there were reports of some resigning on the spot. One tank commander tried to console his gunner, who'd been complaining about the inability of the Cromwell 75mm gun against German armour, to which the gunner replied, What would the infantry do if they were sent into action with rifles that couldn't penetrate the enemy's uniforms? 
it became bad enough that Montgomery himself attempted to suppress criticism of the tanks and banned the writing of reports by senior officers on the matter. In the field, improvisations were made by tank crews to try and counter this inadequacy in armour. Hours were spent welding spare tracks to the front of vehicles and even attaching sandbags in the hope of resisting the Germans' firepower. Some even reversed their tanks into positions so that their engine could absorb damage, negating their one-man advantage of speed in name of survival. After the D-Day landings, the Cromwell initially struggled. The narrow lanes and hedgerows of the Norman countryside meant that the tank could not utilise its main advantage, being at speed. Famously, at Villa Bocage on June 13, 1944, almost an entire 27-tank column consisting of primarily Cromwells was knocked out by just a few Tigers commanded by Michael Wittmann in less than 15 minutes. After these initial setbacks in Normandy, the Cromwell was finally able to utilise its speed and therefore served as an adequately effective vehicle, although often against less than resolute opposition by this stage of the war. There are some fantastic stories about the exploits of this tank in action, my personal favourite being when three Cromwells used their speed to jump a 20-foot canal. Think about it, not even a jeep could manage that at the time. They did this to escape from some of the revered German 88mm anti-aircraft guns. Another interesting story occurred when a Cromwell tank crew found out that they had been driving a training version of the vehicle with significantly less armour protection into battle for a significant period of time, and then opted to keep using it as they saw it as a good luck charm. Lindy Beige has a fantastic video describing these encounters which I have linked in the description. After the war, the Cromwell was sent to other countries such as Israel, Austria and Finland. The Cromwell also served in various other theatres of war. Under the Lend-Lease program, six Cromwells were shipped to the Soviet Union for use on the Eastern Front, however no information exists about their use in combat. It also saw use in the Korean War, alongside the likes of the Centurion and Pershing. Here, the Cromwell began to show its age, although it was able to use its speed to plug gaps that should have been held by much heavier vehicles. Despite this, it still suffered extremely high losses on this front, so much that an army officer even stated in a news report in the late 50s that he pitied any poor wretch fighting in a Cromwell. The Cromwell was eventually retired as the concept of the main battle tank came into fruition with the Centurion and similar vehicles. However, it had served admirably with the equipment that it had been provided with. Incredibly, it even took part in the Six Day War as late as 1967 in the Jordanian and Israeli armies, however it was obviously outclassed in every aspect by any more modern tank it faced. The fact that a tank that was seen as outclassed upon its deployment in 1944 served so many years later is remarkable. Overall, the Cromwell was a fantastic vehicle for the war that was being fought in 1942 when it was designed. It performed admirably against the majority of German vehicles such as the Panzer IV and Weka, but was never designed to face such powerful enemies as the Panther and Tiger. The many delays in its production resulted in it being seen as outdated upon arrival due to its weaknesses against German big cats, but it was still appreciated by many crews for its mobility and adequacy in most situations given the rarity of these powerful German vehicles. The far superior Comet, seen as a tank that the Cromwell should have been, with a much more powerful gun, began to be phased into action to replace the Cromwell in late 1944, but not enough were produced to have a significant impact. The Cromwell was certainly a significant step forward in British tank design despite its reputation of relative weakness, and paved the path towards the MBT era, beginning with the incredibly successful Centurion. It should not be discounted immediately as being outdated upon arrival, since it certainly proved its worth in many situations, but the conservatism still evident in British tank design definitely held it back from any sense of greatness.